Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Shreya. In this video, I'll talk about my resume that got me into HackRank as an ST intern. And if you're looking for my internship experience, you can check out my podcast on Spotify. I've added the link in the description below. So without wasting any more time, let's dive into it. So before we look at my resume, I just want you to know a few things. So the first thing is that HackRank is a skills over pedigree platform which means that it values your skills over your college, your CGP or your academics, okay? So every resume contains about these four things in general, that is CGPA, work experience, college and projects. So when it comes to hack rank, you can forget about your CGP and college. It's all right if you're not from tier one or tier two college or if you don't have a very good CGPA. Uh, they value your work experience and projects more because they highlight your skills. Now, when it comes to projects and work experience, your projects are valued way, way more than your work experience. Okay, so it's very important to have unique projects in your resume. Now, I wanted to share a few tips as well. So, tip number one is don't add clones in your resume because... There are many people who build Amazon or Netflix clones, but like by clone, it actually means that you're trying to create a replica of the same app, which you're not. You're just trying to make an application that looks like Netflix or looks like Amazon. You have not thought about the scalability issues or how will you handle the load and the traffic when it increases or decreases. So what's the What's your thought on that? So you haven't thought about the system design of the app. You have just thought you have just thought about building the app that looks like an already existing application like Amazon or Netflix. And so don't add that because you haven't thought it through. And also don't add it because it doesn't make you stand out from the crowd. Because there are many, many people who are going to add these clones in their resume as well. So if two resumes have the same projects, then both the resumes get rejected in the end. So just to be on the safer side, don't add clones in your resume. Tip number two is don't add projects related to your coursework. So there can be projects that your faculty asks you to build, right? So there's no problem in that. Here's you and you build some project. But... The problem lies when like there are other people from your same class or from your same college who have built a similar project as well. Now, every resume goes through screening, right? So people who actually look at your resume, they'll remember your college and then they'll remember the project. So they'll be like, okay, this person made this project and he's from this college. But when they look at other resumes, they'll come to know that every other person who belonged to that same college and same branch has built this project. So they'll know that this is a part of your coursework. And in the end, both the parties will get the same verdict, that is rejection. So in order to be on the safer side, don't add projects related to your coursework because it doesn't add any value to it. Right? It doesn't make you unique. So like, you don't have... Uh, it actually reduces your chances of getting selected. So don't do that. And yeah, these are the only two tips that I had. Let's look at the resume. So this is the resume. And uh, apart from the hack rank internship, everything else is the same. These are a few internships that I did previously before joining hack rank as an SD intern. And all of them are majorly in Node.js tech stack. And somewhere or the other, I made use of AWS as well. Okay. And these are a few projects. Apart from this project, everything else was made before I joined HackRank. So these are the few projects. So this first project actually maps your uh, life's journey in the form of a linear graph so you can see the ups and downs of your life and then this project is the one that allows you to upload the screenshot of the list of participants in a zoom meeting and it gives you the names of absentees from the same 
So you don't have to scroll through the screenshot and zoom in and zoom out to figure out who was in present in the meeting. And yeah, so this is a normal blogging application, but it also had socket.io for chatting uh, feature. And lastly, I had this Code Cafe website, which is my channel's website. And here's the education. So they don't really care about that and technical activities and some achievements and certifications. That's it. Okay. As long as you have different projects, you know, that makes you kind of unique, unique. And um, if it makes you different from everyone else who's applying for the internship, you have higher chances of getting shortlisted. So, yeah, that's about it. It helped you in some way and thank you for watching.